drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits over 30 years of been there, done that wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Rich Redmond here coming to you from beautiful Midtown Nashville. I'm in my condo here, and I am experimenting here. My buddy Jim McCarthy, my producer, um, a good friend of mine, voiceover artist, drummer, sales expert, hopefully an author here pretty soon. Um, he is uh, the... the um, he is the producer of my podcast and web, web series called Pick Rich's Brain. And he said, you know what, Rich? I think we can offer, offer more value more frequently to the world. And so I am here. I am here to answer questions about music, motivation, success, drumming, navigating Nashville. Um, I see a lot of cool friends coming up here. Sue, what's up? Hey, Brian Wilson joined. What's up? L.A., hello from San Antonio. Hey, um, I... I'm going to be in San Antonio Friday and, and uh, Saturday morning. I'm going to be around uh, beautiful San Antonio, and uh, I'm going to be playing outside, so hopefully it's uh, not too cool. It's going to be Texas, so I think we're good. Royce Hart, what's up? Chris, hello from Indianapolis. I love it. Chops Percussion, the home of the uh, Rhythm Discovery Center and the Percussive Arts Society. Randy, thanks for all the great positivity uh, following me on all my posts um, Steven, what's up? Hey, man, I'm here, just Midtown Nashville, just answering questions. People want to know about music, publishing, motivation, um, moving to Nashville or Los Angeles, lessons with me, whatever. Um, Andrea, what's up? Pittsburgh. Jamie, what's up? Go Red Raiders. Hashtag Lubbock. Hashtag Ski Lubbock. You know, right? Ski Lubbock. We used to say Ski Lubbock. Uh, I think it's still a dry county. Uh, man, there was nothing to do in, in Lubbock, Texas. Just a lot of practice. Good evening, Michael. What's up, Scott? How are you? Ben, Manny, got all these great friends here, man. All these wonderful people. Thank you. If you're one of the 20,000 people that think that there's something to keep returning to this page for from over the last 10 years, 10 years on Facebook, what an amazing platform bringing people together. What's up, Brooke? Hey, yeah, Alex and Rob, how's that little guy, man? Is he practicing? Steve, what's up? Ian, miss you, man. Ian, thank you so much for using my drumsticks all the time, man. Uh, Ian has been an early adapter of my Rich Redmond Signature 595 drumsticks from Promark. We that took about six years to develop with my good my buddy Marco Sicoli there. Um, what tension do you? I knew that the drum tension things would get start showing up. Do you tighten your heads too? Um, hmm. Medium to tight on the snare drum, very loose on the toms, and then the kick drum is very loose as well, but has some front end snap. Any Jason Aldean core coming to Kentucky? Guys, check out jasonaldean.com. Um, I'm playing 36 shows this year as well as some television shows that are going to be happening here. I think we're doing the Today Show, the Ellen Show, and the James – not the James Corden Show, the hmm, – what is it? Uh, James Taylor. Late, late Show is Stephen Colbert. Um, do you like playing on the new stage at the Houston Rodeo? It was nice. You know, I was stuck in one place, so the big stars didn't affect me, but it seemed like everybody else had a good time running out on those thrusts. Hey, Rich from Italy. All right, man. You'd be proud of me last night, man. I made some, uh, I made some, uh, gluten free brown rice pasta. I know it sounds disgusting, um, but I got some nice marinara sauce from Trader Joe's and I had a nice, um, some nice healthy brown rice pasta with some teriyaki chicken breast. Poured myself a little glass of wine, had some dark chocolate after at the meal. It was really, really good. And I made it myself. Daniel, what's up, man? I play with an artist out of Salt Lake. I believe he has the talent to make something with music. Should I move to Nashville? Probably. Joan, what's up? As my buddies from, from uh, New Jersey to Burbank and then back to New Jersey. I don't know how you guys left Sunny Burbank. If I was in Sunny Burbank, I would never leave, but that's okay. Because it's hard to take the New Jersey out of the New Jerseys. <laughs> miss you guys. I really do miss you guys. Um, yeah, so everybody uh, that's tuning in right now, this is a, a free technology that anybody in the world can use. This, this Mark Zuckerberg going live thing. I'm sitting in front of a computer in my condo here in Midtown Nashville, feet away, feet away from iconic Music Row, Nashville, Tennessee. 
And I'm loving how my blue glasses are matching my shirt tonight and all the gray in my beard. Ouch. Um, but anyways, we're still living here, and I've got 41 years of drum playing information, 21 years in the Nashville music business, and I'm here to help if you guys have questions about any of that stuff. And if you can always use my website as a resource. There's a lot of questions that are answered at richredmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D dot com. CrashCourseForSuccess.com. My buddy Jim is on the phone. Good buddy of mine. We've been buddies for um, 10 years. And he and I just yep. got back from our, yeah, our first on-location episode of Pick Rich's Brain. We interviewed um, thought leader, real estate mogul, New York Times best-selling author, Grant Cardone. He rolled out the red carpet. We got to meet his staff, and we did an episode of Pick Rich's Brain, which is available on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Rich Redmond, episode 12 of Pick Rich's Brain. Um, oh, we got more questions here. I just need to scroll down, man. Tips to maintain energy while playing tense sets. Well, hopefully it's not too tense. Hopefully you're getting along with your band. But um, one thing I would tell you about touring is you want to stay super hydrated. And, and what you do is just like a locker room. You look at your urine. If your urine is yellow or bright orange, you got a problem. You need to drink a lot more water. I take pharmaceutical grade um, vitamins, multivitamins, a lot of vitamin D because most of us are vitamin D sufficient. Even those people that live in the Florida and the California states, we're all vitamin D deficient. And, um, you know, I just, a uh, pretty balanced diet. You know, I avoid the heavy creams and sauces. And I try to eat pretty clean every few hours. Do that. Um, hello from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. What's up? I've been to Portsmouth a million times. Love it. What's the motivation behind the larger size hi-hats? You know, when I played 13-inch hi-hats, 14-inch hi-hats, even 15-inch hi-hats now seem like little toys. I like um, the bigger hi-hats. They're, they're meatier. They're beefier. They're chocolatier. They take up more space. At the same time, they almost take up less space in the mix because they're not interfering with the high frequencies of the guitars. So they take up their own space in the mix. And bigger is better, right? Um, what's your advice for me going into country music, music business? Move to Nashville. The only place you can make anything happen in business in the country music industry is to live in Nashville. You cannot live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You cannot live in Des Moines, Iowa. You must be present to win. You got to get here, okay? Put a date on the calendar and get here. See you in Dallas. All right, man. See you in Dallas. Hey, man, if you had to narrow it down, what's the one thing to know about quitting a normal day job and pursuing drumming full-time? Save some money so you're not stressed out, especially if you have people defend, depending on you. You know, if you got a wife and a bunch of little rugrats running around, it might be a little bit more difficult. Um, that's why it's, it's smarter to make big, bold life decisions when you're a little bit younger, but it is never too late, you know. Um, if you have something you want to do, do it. You don't want to be a member of the woulda, coulda, shoulda club, right? Gunner, what's up, man? Hello from the Boston gym. Oh, I guess you're out of Nashville, huh? That's a good buddy of mine. We had coffee the other day. Um, I, I thank you for reminding me. I need to write that letter of recommendation for you. Jojo, what's up? What's your favorite pastime other than drumming? This? I don't know. I like helping people. I'm a big fan of all the Fs. Food, fashion, film. Um, I like all the Fs. I like colorful food. I like, I'm a social butterfly. I like being out with my friends. I like making new friends. <clears throat> Andy Martin, what's up, dude? How you doing? I hope you're still practicing. Got a really supportive mom. Doing great, great things. Wayne Walter, hey, what's up, Wayne? Um, Mark Miller, saw you and Grant Cardone. Dude, thanks for watching, man. Yeah, we go way back, Mark. How you doing, Tori? Connecticut in the house. Yeah, everybody needs a street team. I got Tori, and I got the, the Cardeal family there. What's up? What's up, Rich? From Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm 21. Oh, these just keep going, man. These disappear, Jim. I got Jim on the line here. Um, Matt Critter, hey. I'm here. I'm here. Ask another question. There was somebody asking me about move. Oh, I missed your, missed your question. These, these disappear on me. Uh, these questions are disappearing. Hey, Rich, come back to Kentucky. You can use my pedals again. I'm sure there's a funny story about that that I don't remember. Um, following your content, you're amazing. Next time you're in Italy, I don't come to Italy a lot, but maybe you can get me over there. Um, Femi, what's up? Hey, how's my little house? Carmelo, what's up? Uh, Corb, to Cody Kirby, any place to do open call auditions? I'm ready for the next step. Very few open call auditions. There's very few private auditions. There's very few auditions. Most gigs um, happen on referrals that are based on real sincere, mutually beneficial, lifelong, sincere relationships. So you need to have a lot of people know who you are. Met you in Grand Junction, Colorado. Coolest musician I've ever met. That is so sweet. Thank you for calling me a musician. Ha ah ha. How do you feel your calendar when you don't have any gigs on the books? Um, my calendar is like Tetris. It's color coded and I'm either teaching, speaking, traveling, writing books or acting. I have creative pursuits 
and I say no more than ever just because things are landing in my lap. Thank God. 20 years of Nashville, 20 years of creativity. Kyle Abernathy, my buddy, we were in a band called Eskimo Pie together in Lubbock, Texas, and we used to throw uh, Eskimo Pies into the drunk audience members, and they loved us, and club owners hated us because we made a mess, but they also loved us because we sold out everywhere we played. Hey, Rich, um, from Divine, Texas, or is it Devine? I don't know. Can't wait to see you Friday. It's going to be awesome. A uh, little redhead, redhead kid. Awesome. We met you last time at San Antonio at the AT&T Center. Love that. We're going to have a great time Friday. Good dude. Thanks for showing up for us. Jason Wyatt, San Diego in the house. I think I have some San Diego uh, clinic. We're looking for a good day for my San Diego clinic coming up this summer. By the way, all of you Angelinos out there, any Angelino friends, people that are living on the West Coast, I will be in the Los Angeles area June 24 through July 11, and I will be playing teaching and doing acting auditions probably doing a little speaking as well but i'll probably be soaking up the sun that's a break for my tour and i will be in los angeles so mark your calendars we'll get a coffee we'll get a cocktail we'll change the world what is your best advice for someone who wants to play for stress relief okay that's a that's a great thing well you buy a an a boy uh, you buy uh, an affordable drum set from Guitar Center, and you can even get um, a drum set that has the Remo silent stroke heads. They're very quiet heads, and um, Sabian will hate me for saying this, but they have some soft cymbals. Silgen has some really soft cymbals that are really affordable, so you won't piss off your neighbors. And I, I would buy my book, Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids, uh, ages 5 to 10. It's a methodology that works for 5-year-olds five five or 50-year-olds that act like five-year-olds. So check that out. Um, any master classes coming to New Hampshire? I don't think so. I'm playing up in Maine. I might hang out in Maine and do an event there. And I think there's a drum shop, actually, in Portsmouth, um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I may be doing something there. So stay tuned to their stuff. And also, if you guys follow me, Kyle Abernathy, be honest. Aren't the original Zildjian A's the best symbols ever? A little heavy, my friend. I like something a little chocolatey and a little bit darker that blends a little bit more but yeah if you're playing in a heavy duty knuckle dragging rock band there's nothing best better than some just old a's you know or the sabian cymbals that that model those hey uh how much do you love the tune bot tune bots are great drum dials are great they're great tools for you getting sounds quickly i'm super spoiled because in most of my travels now i have my one of my best pals johnny hole who can tune a drum faster than anybody i've ever met in my life um um, how much water weight do you lose during a full set? Well, usually I have to take my shirt in the heat of the summer and I can wring it out. I can keep wringing it out and wringing it out. And, uh, yeah, it smells. Mark Flagg, living the dream. Karen, Karen, my dearos, my dearos. Love you, Rich. Oh, I love, it's nice to be loved. Hey, right? Grant Cole, what's up? What's up, bud? Uh, Scott O'Malley asks, do you take your fingers when you play? How do you take care of your hands? Do I take my I fingers? Find my hands just get tore up after five straight nights, and he uses Promark Active Active Grip. Yeah, I, yeah, I um, I tape up my hands with uh, duct tape, not duct tape, but gaff tape, which is more expensive and classier, and actually will stay stay on your hands and not leave residue. It's kind of pricey. But if you're a touring or recording drummer or musician and you don't have a large roll of gaff tape with you, you're doing yourself a, di a disservice because it works for everything. Holding down music, taping down gear, taping up your hands. Usually my hands split and crack in two times a year in the heat of the summer or in the coldest of the cold. Okay, so right then what I do is I put um, new skin on the cut, which is very painful. I, I use an antiseptic. I clean it out. I put new skin on it. I let that dry, and then I wrap it with uh, gaff tape, and the show must go on. The body is amazing. It always heals. Brian Edwards, bro. I went to college with Brian Edwards at Texas Tech University. Hey, Brian, I'm writing a book right now, man, and I'm having to remember all these amazing times that we had at Texas Tech from 1988 to 1992 playing in the jazz band, playing the symphony orchestra, playing in the symphonic band. A lot of great lessons and stories that came out of that era. Wayne Young, will there be a clinic while in Dallas? Um, trying to remember when I'm going to be in Dallas. Um, I know that my buddies at Lone Star Percussion, we've been trying to do a clinic there for six years, and I think I'm playing there this year on a Saturday. So most likely there will be a midday clinic at Lone Star Percussion from probably 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., so keep in touch with them. Jerry, 
Natick Mass in the house. What's up, man? I love, yeah, Mass is great. I got a lot of friends up there. My buddy Jimmy Pemberton. Maybe my buddy Jimmy's tuning in. I don't know. He's super busy. Um, but people have been wondering, what is this thing, Lesson Squad? Check out www.lessonsquad.com. This is not my brainchild. I am a consultant. I am a part owner of this business. But this is basically the Uber and the Lyft of music education. For you busy parents out there, your son or your daughter wants to take piano lessons, vocal lessons, violin lessons, drum lessons, guitar lessons. The teacher, highly vetted and insured, arrives at your house. Nowhere to go. You order music education, shows up at your front door like Postmates and Grubhub. And all of the um, e-commerce is handled right through the site. It will be taking off. If you are a creative out there that wants to quit your day job, you want to stop making coffee, you want to stop waiting tables, you want to stop driving Uber, sign up for LessonSquad.com. Teach, have teaching your instrument be your day job. Check it out. Doyle Mackey, rack em rich. Marlene, what's up? Hi, Rich. I like a lot of smiley marks there. I'm a smiley type person. Nancy, how do you handle time management in your busy life between touring and motivational speaking? It is insane. It is insane. It is insane. Insane. And that's why there has to be um, frequent breaks, like a little Netflix visit, a gym visit, a dark chocolate visit, a um, happy hour visit. You know, you have to, I try to break up my busy life with things, with not vacations, but mini vacations. What's up, Jordan? That's my buddy from my acting class from the Nashville Acting Studio. Super talented, also a drummer. A lot of people in my life that do other things, they all have a background in playing the drums, and that's kind of a commonality we have. But I'm so proud of a lot of my fellow actors in Alan Dysert's class and in Caroline's class, Nashville Acting Studio, and my, my pal Regina Moore, more casting, and been studying acting for the last um, three years. And everybody in my classes is just booking all the time, filming commercials, doing short films, um, doing parts in indie films, and everybody's just doing really, really great. So I wish I can get the ba back to class here pretty soon. Um, this is a rare Monday that I have in Nashville, and the shit is about to hit the fan because Jason Aldean is dropping his eighth record. And like I said, we're doing Ellen, we're doing Colbert, we're doing iHeart, we're doing Ellen, we're doing all the shows. And so it's going to be a lot of travel. So the Today Show, we can't escape the Today Show. We have a good time. I love uh, Al Roker. What can I say? Uh, Dustin, met you at Guitar Center in Knoxville a few years back. That's right, bud. Very inspiring clinic. Thank you for coming, man. Um, uh, all you people, everyone, all you people that have been supporting me over the last 10, 12 years of me doing educational events, it came with a heavy cost. It came from the sweat of my brow. Um, a lot of times I would have to set up a set of drums for Jason Aldean, go set up a set of drums for my clinic, go back, do sound check for Jason Aldean, go back and do the clinic, break down, get back to the venue, unpack the drums, and go and play my show with Jason Aldean. And before I had a drum tech, I would have to break. So I literally was setting up and breaking down drums six times a day, and I was doing that sometimes six days a week, and I did that for years. So anybody who says that I don't deserve to have my friend John Hole, who is a highly skilled and paid drum tech, then go poop because I do. Um, Pick Rich's brain. Hey, Rich, I have a question. I know times are different, but for an up-and-coming drummer, what would you advise you for meeting established acts, getting your name known? I play for Rocket Queen. What's up, Doug? Man, great to come across you, man. My, my friends in, in the band Rocket Queen, check out the spelling, R-O-C-K-E-T-T. -T. Um, I played on the record about two or three years ago. Rocket Queen, yeah, they're great. They're really, really great. And I filled in for their, their first drummer, who was a carpenter by day. See, if he was on Lesson Squad, it would have had a different thing, but he was a carpenter by day, and he took his thumb out, and they had studio time booked in Nashville, and I went and I played on their record for them. And then one of these songs called Time Bomb, you can actually find on my five-and-a-half-hour educational package at Drumming in the Modern World. I know it's a mouthful, but I wanted it to be dramatic, and I wanted it to be epic. Drumminginthemodernworld.com. I spent my retirement on it, folks. Check it out. Do me a solid. Download it. If you're a teacher, if you're a student, if you're looking to, to get the skills you need to be successful in music, drumminginthemodernworld.com. And also join the Facebook community, Drumming in the Modern World. That is a place for people that are interested in cultivating successful careers in the music business can go and interact. And I post something there every single day. John Hall rocks. No shit. Austin from Band Aubrey Road. <laughs> We can swear, right? Is Zuckerberg going to throw me down? Is this is a P, It's not a PG. This is R. Um, which software do you use live on stage for loops and click tracks? 
Um, my dummy click track is generated from my Roland SPDSX, which I think is one of the greatest inventions in the percussion industry in the last decade. If you don't have one, save your your um, your paper route money and go buy one. It'll make a big difference in your career. It's a very powerful machine. And then we have a, a, a wonderful person side stage named Squints that runs Pro Tools. So we run two Pro Tools systems that are talking and are working in tandem, and if one breaks down, the other one kicks in. Pick Rich's brain. Hey, I have a different question. I know times are different, but advice for media style. Okay. Oh, uh, I never answered your question. I know times are different. What advice for, would you have for meeting, getting your name out there? Well, dude, you're with Rocket Queen. You don't need to get your name out there, man. You just got to make that band successful. Why? Because you're a full vested member. Don't be a side man. Be in the band. Um, I don't know. It's just like anything. You got to crash parties, shake hands, let the world know you exist. When someone opens a door for you, you have to knock that opportunity out of the ballpark. The world is moving too fast for you to be mediocre. You have to be excellent in everything you do. Um, Lesson Squad, sign up, guys. Check it out. Um, what's tour bus like? Like, well, you can't poop on a tour bus. I don't know if you know about this, but there's no number two on a tour bus. So you get really, you get a really strong colon because if something hits in the middle of the night, you have to go up, put your clothes on. You got to talk to the driver. And you're gonna be like, hey, dude, really sorry. I know you're trying to get us to, to load in for a 7 a.m. load in in Cincinnati, but um, I'm, I got one way ticket to Brown Town, and you got to go. And you and, and you and you got to go. But other than that, we have all the the pleasantries of life. We have our own closet. Um, you have a nice, comfortable bed. I sleep very, very well on a tour bus because I've been doing it for 21 years. And you know, we have a wet bar, we have a coffee machine, we have a microwave, and uh, we we hang out and we have some of the best times um, with our best friends traveling the world, which is a really great thing. Um, hey, Rich, uh, do you know where the clinic will be in Maine? Mark Braveman is my guy. Whatever the big box store there is in Maine, or the drum shop, that's probably where that'll be. Um, your crash course changed my life so much. Thanks so much, Randy. Uh, guys like Randy are scattered around the country. I call them kind of like my street team. And whenever I'm in that city or that region, they'll pick me up from the venue and they'll take me to um, their mother's basement. And they have set up 10 drummers from the area that pay on PayPal and we spend two, three hours together and everybody gets to ask questions and gets up to get to get up and perform for me and we work on the Ted Reed book and we work on the stick control book and and I just talk to them about all the things that they might need to take their game to the next level. Hey Sarah, Sarah is my good buddy. Um, follow her at Drum, Mani Drum Maniac 21 on Instagram. She, post, she posted her video that she's submitting for Hit Like a Girl. Hit Like a Girl is an awesome contest. It's been around for about five years. That is brought to us by Drum Magazine. And um, check her out. And I wish voting was made by the public because she would probably win it. Um, but it'll be a jury of my peers and industry people that will, will pick the, uh, the video. But I told her to do a little video that showcases her outlining the skills needed to play the history of music. So she started with Gene Krupa, sing, 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 and then she went into Motown, and then she went into classic rock, and then she went into dance and disco and little, all that stuff. So uh, when are you coming back to Connecticut? I think it's on the schedule there, man. All you guys are asking these questions. It's a click away, jasonaldean.com. Go to jasonaldean.com. It'll tell you when I'm going to be there. We are playing Connecticut on Friday, May the 25th. <laughs> And I'm teaching a master class that day, private lessons. I think I'm all stocked up. Thank you, Sarah and Tori, for booking me that day. And we'll be there at the Hartford, in Hartford, at the Xfinity Center. It's going to be great. We'll have a great show. Hopefully things will be cooling down uh, or warming up a little bit <laughs> there. Um, I'm going to the Whiskey Jam tonight. What are good ways to network with coming on too strong? I'm in Nashville because, okay, a lot of people ask about this. People can't smell it. Like, Sincere networking is that is just that. You're interacting with other human beings. You're finding commonalities. It's like asking a girl out or asking a guy out. You want to really find out about that other person if you have things in com common. Make it about the other person. And then if you have a common language, you could talk about the value add that you can bring to that person's life. For, for me is, hey, are you a songwriter? Because I'm a drummer and I'm a percussionist and I'm a songwriter and I'm a producer. Look at all the different ways that we can add value to each other's life. And you just practice. You just practice. If you're a really pushy salesperson, mm, it's not really the way to go. Let your actions kind of speak for themselves. Always have a, have a business card and uh, have a firm handshake. Do not have a wet fish handshake. 
Look people in the eye. Do your best to remember names. Buy people drinks. That really works. Hey, Rich, can I get a shout out? My buddy Steve Cooper. Steve Cooper, I was saying hi to, to Joan, and I was like, you can't take the New Jersey out of the New Jerseyites. I don't know why they left Burbank. Now I have no one to crash with when I'm in Burbank. But we've all had a really good time. Steve is a really awesome host of coopertalk.net. Go to coopertalk.net. He's a great podcaster, great interviewer. I've been a guest on the show two times. He interviews actors, musicians, and people in the entertainment industry, and I believe he has over 600 episodes. So everybody check out coopertalk.net. That's my buddy Steve. We always have a great time together. Paul, what's up? Um, it's the best. You're right, it is. Cooper Talk is really, really, really great. Nick Gray, Rich, when will the video of you and Grant Cardone be ready to watch? It is ready. You can go to Rich. You can go to YouTube.com forward slash Rich Redmond, and it'll be one of the first videos you will see. Um, also, Jim, we can. You can go to uh, my buddy Jim, um, my producers on the other line here, helping me read these comments. You can go to RichRedmond.com forward slash podcasts, and the audio is there. And then also, audio is at Google Play, iTunes. In Stitcher, and Stitcher is spelled S T. What's that? About? Ask, uh, people that are listening that are listening to right now. Yeah. What do they prefer? Do they prefer to listen to it or watch the episode? Okay, so we're getting we're getting some questions from my producer and uh, Muse Jim McCarthy, and he's saying, "What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer what? Do you, how are you consuming the content? If you're a fan of Pickridge's Brain, are you consuming it just the audio?" which you can kind of just take with you anywhere, or do you prefer watching me in Crash Studio? You know, fully produced, HD cameras, candles burning, incense burning, me and my guest, uh, multi-camera angles, drinking our coffee. You know, I love doing that. I love going big. Um, do you like this? Do you like me sitting in front of my computer in my condominium asking uh, answering questions. Tell me how you like consuming um, the the content. I think I'm going to be doing all three for a long time, but this is great because I feel like I'm answering a, quite a few questions here, even more than when we film Pick Rich's Brain. A one-way ticket to Brown Town. Hell yeah, Mario. Mario and I have done sessions together. Mario's got my back. He's trying to give me crash um, speaking events in the uh, in the Midwest. Mario, I am coming to the Midwest, and hey, I just booked a clinic on Sunday, May the 20th. I'm going to be at Melody Music. I'm going to be doing a, Mel a, Melody Mu a clinic at Melody Music in Bloomington, Indiana, which is the home of John Mellencamp. And let's face it, he was his music was a big influence on me. Um, Jeremy Little joined. Jeremy Little, J Jeremy Little joined the club. Oh, my God, it's so exciting. There should be three exclamation points. Jeremy is my good buddy. He is now a new Nashvillian. Uh, he was in Nashville years ago. We were in a band called Front Row for the Meltdown. It was a post-apocalyptic pop band. And um, we had put out a record called All the Wrong Things, if you can find it. It was recorded in Glendale, California. We had an amazing time. And then after that experience, I think Jeremy and the rest of the band fell in love with the sun. And they moved to sunny Los Angeles. And, and Jeremy became a really uh, popular composer for TV and film. Um, and now he is back in Nashville composing, playing music. Um, the lyrics to Wheels Rolling is why, is why us musicians do what we do. You better believe it, man. You better believe it. That's definitely our life story right there. Dwayne, hi, Rich. Dwayne is one of our super fans, man. This guy, we will do a show, and it'll be below zero in New York City, and he will be on the sidewalks at 3.45 in the morning waiting to, for a chance to get in to see us on the Today Show or Good Morning America. Dwayne is the, he's always the guy in the front row. He's pumping his fists. He's pointing at everybody. I don't know how many hours of video you have from the shows and, and, and photos. We, we love you, man. We couldn't do this without you. Um, have you added any new equipment to change how you sound? No, I pretty much play a, a, a Ringo Starr, um, John Bottom type drum set, three, two to three toms, not a whole lot of cymbals. The cymbals are low so the girls can see me. And, um, <laughs> there we there we go. Um, I I endorse a brand of drums called DW Drums, that's a, which is kind of the American dream. They were a drum company born in a garage in Southern California in 1971, and now they're one of the biggest manufacturers on the planet. And every couple of years, they'll make me a brand new drum set. So I will tell you, for this tour that starts in May, you will be seeing my Darth Vader drum set. It's going to be a matte black finish, beautiful black satin finish, black rims, black heads. 
I will be wearing black. As you know, if you follow me for the last decade, I wear black. And just recently, I have let my hair go gray. Everybody let me know if I look like the old man playing the drums, the old man in the sea, if I should do that or if I should go back to living a completely fake life. Um, just <laughs> No, I, I've been dyeing my hair for 10 years, and I have a great hair guy, and you can't tell. Um, but now the cat's out of the bag. I was experimenting with this for acting, and then I started getting a lot of um, ladies that said they liked it. So I'm, I might just keep it. Next time I'm in Nashville, we need to hit the red door. Well, yeah, I've been going to the red door as my favorite little watering hole for musicians and creatives for the last 15 years. Am I proud of it? No. But you'll find me there, Zach Appleton. Rich, best way you think to balance wanting to do acting, voiceover, Work and drum, dude, it's really hard, man. It is really, really hard, and it's really hard to be a slave to a lot of masters, and the only way you're ever going to have a fighting chance of doing any of it long-term is being really good at all of it. Um, but let's face it. I've been playing drums since 1971. It's always going to be a big part of my life. Um, so there's that. But balance in life is everything, man. Balance, 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 and, and the more ambitious you are, the harder that is to do. Um, Karen, are you playing at Gillette? I don't, I don't know if I have that on my calendar. Lee, hey, Rich, I hope all is well. I was curious when you're on tour, do you warm up physically for yourself and for the kit? I don't have a drum set backstage. Some drummers love having a full drum set backstage, like Neil Peart from Rush and some of these guys, they have a full drum set backstage. Um, I just have a pad. I have a practice pad. And sometimes I have these little faux paddles, and I'll just get the blood circulating an hour before the show. Everyone's backstage. We're listening to her on an iPod. We might be watching a sporting event, and I'm there doing paradiddles, singles, doubles, accents, flams, just uh, just kind of loosening everything up. And, yes, I do stretch. I stretch every day. When I'm on tour, I, I stretch twice a day. I exercise every day, usually. And I try to eat right, lots of water, lots of vitamins. Hey, Rich, coming back to PA anytime soon. Uh, use my kid at a master class in State College. Dude, thank you. This, this, is, this is what I'm saying. This is the street teams. Thank you guys for the last 12 years of caring and coming, showing up to my clinics. You know, I tell everybody, you know, my buddy Jim, who's on the line, he's my producer, my Pick, uh, Pick uh, Rich's Brain podcast. Basically, we did an episode one time on, on how music education is disappearing, the arts in the school is disappearing, and how me and a couple other drummers that do – uh, clinics regularly are keeping that platform alive. Me, Stanton Moore, Mark Shulman, Kenny Aronoff, uh, Todd Zuckerman, um, uh, Thomas Lang. We're out there. We're doing it, right? And you guys should keep showing up. Come meet your favorite drummer. Shake their hand. Be in their presence. See them sweat. It's something that watching someone on YouTube will never replace. So come see us, okay? Seeing you and Grant together was awesome. Thank you. That was a really, really great thing. And that was because of a thing called persistence and determination. Do I have those things? Yes. But you know who has even more than me? Jim McCarthy. Jim McCarthy bugged Grant Cardone's people twice a month for a year. And we finally got there and we had a great experience. And I got to mingle with his entire staff. And I signed autographs and gave away drum sticks and drum heads. And everybody he's got there is working. Ten times. Top notch. Top notch. Ten times. Anything you want to do in life, you might have to work ten times as hard to get it done. Do it. Roll up your sleeves. Do the work. And just take your little mini vacations. You know, I think I'm probably going to go to the Bahamas for it was slated for two days, but it might be a five-day trip. And the only thing I have to do is bang my, my djembe for 45 minutes. So that's going to be really, really great. It's going to be a great time. But along the way, I do little I mini vacations. Go somewhere different with that. Yeah. I'm going to bang my bongo. Um, I love watching, but I listen to it on my way to gigs. Okay, so Ian is saying that he goes with the audio. It's more portable, um, just like audio books are very popular. People can consume information on the go on uh, when they're commuting. I love that. Nico, what's up? Nico is actually the guy that booked me at um, that clinic at the uh, Melody Music in uh, Bloomington. I think he's one of the teachers there. So thank you, Nico. And Nico is also very interested in, in taking 25 years of drum charts that I have saved and digitizing them for me so I could put them into my iPod and iPad and travel and always have my charts that will be alphabetized. So if I need to play a note-on-note -note version of Back in Black the next time I'm in L.A. and the charts in Nashville, ah, 
I'll have it on my iPad. So I've been a little slow to the generation. There's a generational gap there. I really like charts on paper because I don't trust electronics, but at the same time, we're reaching a point where um, accessibility and ease and efficiency is is going to overtake that. So I dig the video version. Thanks, Jonathan. Stephen Smith. Steve Smith. Is, is that the Steve Smith with vital information? Just kidding. What's up, Stephen Smith? How are you, man? Love the face-to-face is what Tori says. Paul, any drummer weekends in the future? Guys, I don't know if you know this, but I, I, I created an event. I guess I can add that to my bio. I created an event called My Drummer's Weekend, and I did four in Nashville, Tennessee, and one in Los Angeles, California. And it was basically 72 hours of music and mentoring and drumming. And I had the greatest drummers in the world. Everyone from Thomas Lang to Mark Schulman to Kenny Aronoff to all the recording drummers in Nashville come spend three days with students from around the world. And everybody was kicking it in limos and staying at a nice hotel and eating catered meals and going home with thousands of dollars of door prizes. And we did it for four years. And I and I stopped because it was just so much work. And I just feel like it's the same thing. It's like we're pulling people's teeth to to for music education. If you don't see the value in music education and investing in yourself, I don't care what it costs. I'm not getting rich on those things, guys. You know how much it costs to have a hotel package, hire a limousine company, do catered meals, um, hire people that are world-class drummers, put them in a Virgin Airlines flight, feed them. I mean, the the talent, the staff, the physical locale to host that kind. I'm not getting rich. I'm doing these things because... I'm a philanthropist, and I want to pay it forward to a whole future generation of people that want to make their dreams come true. So if the event costs $2,000, and you make lifelong friends, and you go home with $2,000 worth of door prizes, and you've changed your life, who's winning? You. You're winning. So if I get emails, email me, booking at richredmond.com. If you are fired up about me doing more Drummer's Weekends and you sign up, I will do them because there is no shortage of world-class drummers that I call friends. And you might have a rock drummer. You might have a metal drummer. You might have a jazz drummer, a country drummer, a classical drummer, a percussionist, all in one camp, one camp. Another thing that I've been doing is doing what I call my drum tensives, and it's six to seven hours a day. Um, one or two days with me. It's basically a crash course, and we work on the money beats. We work on playing with click tracks. We work on tuning our drums. We work on reading. We work on playing percussion. We work on the skill sets you need to be a working drummer because who wants to just play in their basement? You want to play the big stage, right? Okay, so that's what my drum tensives, and I'll be doing those throughout the year as well. Hey, Rich, we met at Big Apple Music in New Hartford. Our son Josh really liked the Rudiments book you recommended. Um, I'm trying, I probably recommended the Syncopation book, the Stick Control book, by George Lawrence Stone, probably the Wilcoxon book, the Podemski's book, the Albright book. These are classic drumming tomes. These are the Bibles of drumming, and you should you should check that out. Come back to Tampa. I will, Stephen Smith. Matt Gretter. Matt Gretter is a great friend, man. He picks me up from the airport. He drives me into wine country. I went to wine country um, on a mini vacation. It was a mini working vacation. What do I do? I mix business and pleasure. Yeah, Matt, I'll see you at Shoreline Amphitheater, buddy. Um, I was hosting a charity event in in Napa, and I was great. I was sitting in with a band, and I was hosting a charity event to benefit the wild forest fires that that they had. There was a really bad scene. We raised lots of money. Um, I go out there. Matt picks me up from the airport, and I made a working vacation out of it. I, I, I really had a great time there sampling lots of things, including the wine. It was really, really a good time. So take little mini vacations. Um, you don't need to go to Cabo for two weeks. Um, that's two weeks out of your life lost in you pursuing your purpose. Take mini vacations, like something as simple as turning off your phone or turning it face down on the table for 20 minutes when you go to the jam coffee house and have a iced coffee with coconut milk. By the way, if anybody sees me at the jam coffee house in Nashville, Tennessee, across from Belmont, it's my favorite coffee house in town. I feel like I discovered them really early on, and they have the coldest coconut milk and a great iced coffee, and that's where you'll find me in the morning. What's there to use on flyover states? It sounds perfect. Nico, thanks, man. Most of the number one songs that you hear on the radio with Jason Aldean were recorded with a five and a half by 14 off the shelf. You can buy it at Forks Drum Closet or GuitarCenter.com. 
Ludwig Black Beauty. Um, it's one of the most recorded drummers in history. You hear it on the radio all the time, especially in the music between 1960 and 1996. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's one of the most recorded uh, drums of all time. And so that's the drum I use a lot because why am I not using a, a DW snare drum in the studio? Well, I'm in a servant-oriented industry, and if the producer and the engineer like that drum out of the other 20 snare drums I might bring to the recording session, that's the one I'm using. So um, here we go. Symbols low so the girls can see me, right, Mark? Come on, man. Mark's my buddy there in, uh, in, um, in Maine. And we get lobster every time we get together. And I met your brother, and he came to see the show. That was really great. Ronnie, I've been wondering why you have been letting it go. Ronnie, I've been wondering why you have been letting it go great. I'll take it that Ronnie does not like that. Um, I don't know, man. I, I feel like the dog whisperer, man. That guy, Caesar. There's a lot of guys. I've got, like, the, the other day, I got, I think, last week, I got Clooney four times. That's not a bad comparison. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, the, the, the cats, who knows? Maybe I'll dye my hair. Maybe I'll dye my hair for this year's tour. But the fact is, is that I'm comfortable either way. And um, I don't know. I'm feeling if one of those side effects of aging is feeling comfortable in your own skin and feeling sexy, go with it. All right. Because I'm feeling good about myself. Thank you, Amy. See, Amy's a girl. Isaac. Hey, Rich, are you making it out to Iowa on the new tour? I think we're making it to Des Moines, Des Moines, right? Never had a bad time in the Midwest. See you at Hollywood Amphitheater in May. Jimmy, what's up, buddy? Yeah, Chicago, what a great city, you know, what a wonderful city, and my buddy Vic Salazar will be there, and he's going to pick me up, and I'm teaching, actually, I'm teaching a master class at Vic's place, so if you're interested in studying with me that day, I'm doing a master class from 11.30 to 1.30, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., it's being hosted by Vic Salazar, look up Vic Salazar, Google him, look him up on Facebook, Ronnie Long, if you ever get a minute, or remember, I would love to question you about one fill you did for one of the Lavella songs. I've been going back and forth with them on what the lick is. Are you playing with them? Are you guys playing? Are you playing with the Lavellas? That's great. Um, if you're asking about a lick on that record, I am. that is very cool because we did that record quickly. We did that record very – we got some really quality stuff, but it was in a very short period of time. So if you like a fill, that makes me happy because that means I wasn't re um, digging into my bag of old, dusty, rusty tricks. Sylvester, what's up? Sylvester Rojas, man, what's up, man? I always look forward to seeing you at MI. I know Stuart's really proud of you. I know the drum faculty's really proud of you. I know I'm really proud of you. I think you're going to do great in Los Angeles. I think you're going to stay there. You're going to live there. Or you're going back home. I forget where that is, but it's somewhere warm. Um, Peart has a highly paid tech to set that up. You're right. Now, if I told Jim John Hull, can I please get a full set of drums backstage? The problem is a tour the size of Aldine's thing. We have 60 employees, right? And then there's the two opening acts and all their people. And even some of the biggest amphitheaters and arenas in North America, there, we don't have enough dressing rooms. There's not enough dressing rooms, right? And I know that my band would hate me if I had a set of drums. But there is that thing called, um, you know, the DW has this thing called the Traveler, the New Yorker. They have these little, fold up, these little performance kits that fold up. My buddy Daru um, that plays with Jack White helped uh, design that. And you can put Remo silent strokes on those, silent stroke heads, which are very si quiet. And then Sabian actually just came out with these low frequency symbols that if anybody from Sabian is watching, I need to call and pick some of those up because not only for practicing, but for playing small venues. If you're playing the Italian restaurant or if you're playing a jazz club and you want to have ultra silent, quiet, darker symbols, that's what Sabian just released. So check those out. Um, Tori, we love Tori. Um, Tim, Sharon, what's up, buddy? I think I played on one or two of Tim's records. Thoughts on band management agent, producer? You don't producers, promoters. Okay, band management. You don't need a manager or a booking agent till you need one, and you'll know. You'll know when you need one when your life becomes unmanageable, um, or when you need someone to act on your behalf to negotiate contracts, or most importantly, negotiate money. Okay, because you know, there's some time, I love my job so much, I will show up and at the end of the day, I'll have played on 10 songs for somebody and gone through three shirts and two gallons of water and three iced coffees and they go, here, and I go, oh yeah, I get paid for this. Unbelievable. That's the goal. Whatever that is, find that thing where you go, oh yeah, I get paid for this. I love this so much. I would do this for free, right? 
Roland, so incredible you got Luke Combs with you this year. Yeah, that's right. We're going to have a good time out there. The guy's on fire. He's got a bunch of hits. Just saw him. He's amazing. Ruthie, hey, Rich, Scott, would like to see you at Aldina's small venue. Yeah, we do some of that, you know, when we do these, these iHeart Unplug things, and we just did a thing for YouTube. If you type in um, um, the name of the new Aldine single, YouTube Unplugged, um, there's a video of me playing a djembe. So we do a lot of those things. And then and I don't know how it works, but we have a pre-show every night where, we're, where Aldine does a Q&A, and we play three songs. And I play a Remo djembe. And if there's, if there's a drummer out there that does not want to play hand drums, you're missing out because I can make a djembe sound like a full drum set. It's much more portable, and it's very quiet. And all the guys in my band, they love it. Met you at Woodstick in Tacoma. Man, that was so fun. I've done Woodstick two times with uh, Sukerman and Alan White and um, Aronoff and the Michael DeRozier from Heart. Uh, just amazing, amazing individuals. And, of course, it's the Mutual Admiration Society. Jason Sutter was there. We had some great – and it raises money for an amazing cause. And there's 500 drummers playing at the same time. How can you go wrong? Any chance you'll ever come to Philly to do a crash? I could have sworn I've done something in Philly for my friend Vince Mancuso with Audio Technica. I think he's from Philly. And um, if my buddy Steve Cooper is watching, coopertalk.net, Coop, think about a place where I could do a motivational event or a clinic in Philly. I would love to come to Philly. There's such a rich tradition there. And, of course, I'm a big fan of the movie Rocky. Rich, friend of John Eddy here. I'm a John Eddy fan, man. We just went to go see the Elvis Presley premiere about two weeks ago at the Bell Court. It's a new documentary on HBO. And I was hanging out with my buddy John. I'm a big fan of John. Started working with John because I started off as a fan and we became friends. Wondering when you do co writing, do you typically work on a piece solo and then come? Nope, I never work on writing a song by myself. Maybe I come in with a song title or a groove or an idea. But as a songwriter, I function best in a group setting because I am a horrible guitar player and I must surround myself with um, people that have talent that I do not. So find people that have skill sets that you do not have and you can come together. I'm an amazing collaborator. That's what I do. Um, hey, Rich, what's up? Is Sean? Sean, I think it's a, probably a silent H. Um, he's, he's like, no, jerk, it's Sean. CJ, thank you for all you do, Rich. You're an inspiration. Oh, thank you, man. It's really, um, sometimes I, on a daily basis, think I am a crazy person, and I think most people that are successful, that are ambitious, that are working on things, feel alone. They feel tired. They feel sometimes alienated. So it's, a good, it's good to know that people actually care about what you're putting out into the universe, and it's good me, for me to surround myself with, with other um, successful people because I do seem yeah, I'll see you in that, too. Huh, okay. Should I end broadcast and start again? You could. I'll do that. I'm talking to Jim McCarthy right now, Jim McCarthy, and then my buddy Justin Mooney was like, hey, man, everybody lost you. So we're back. I'm back here, and this is kind of like a, uh, a new version of Pick Rich's Brain. Um, this is the, um, the home game. Here I am in, in beautiful midtown Nashville. I'm very proud of this house that this drummer built. And um, it's a funny thing. I have never lived alone in 47 years. I've had wives. I've had girlfriends. I've had dorm room mates. I've had roommates. I've had bandmates. I've never lived alone. And it is incredible because I am not wearing any pants right now. Um, and that is an awesome thing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, I can do whatever I want. And, and it's been really, really, really an incredible um, thing. And I always enjoy seeing all the guys in my band because... I have had the ability to have a little decompression and, and be by myself and watch Netflix. By the way, people ask me, what do, what do I do for fun? I am binging on the Santa Clarita diet. Um, last year I was in my acting classes in LA and one of the casting directors came in from Santa Clarita diet and I was just loving the show. It's like you fall in love with the characters and before you know it, um, little, um, What's her name? The, the, the lead actress is, is a zombie, and she's eating people. And it's campy, and it's super fun. Uh, Richard, hey, sometimes playing with some groups, the other members tend to want to push the song out of the pocket. Well, yeah, that's the whole world. We don't use a click, which I know would help, but the other members are not comfortable to click. Then don't use one. You got to just – if the guys in your band are dead set, if maybe they're old dogs, you can't teach them new tricks, don't use a click. Look down, look at your green light, red light, green light, red light. Get that groove in your DNA. And make that groove dance and just get better 
at playing a, a friendly pocket. Now, what I, what I call a friendly pocket is you can move here and there with the guys in your band, but for the most part, you're honoring that quarter note. You're respecting that quarter note, and that comes with time, time in the trenches to not be influenced by the, the vocalist pushing or the bass player pushing. Because if they push too much, you have to go with them, right? And it's just a skill that just comes over time. And most young bands are playing a lot with click tracks. So maybe get in with a bunch of younger guys and play with the click track. You're the best, Rich. Thanks. Do you like cats? I like jazz musicians, man. I like, I like musicians, man. But I do love cats. Yeah, I had uh, several cats in my lifetime, but my favorite was a cat named Sassy. And in 2015, my life was like a country song. My cat died and my wife left me and there was a train and some other things that happened in the song. But, um, but yeah, Sassy was amazing. She was like a little human being. She had such personality and she met me at the door every night and always happy to see me when I came back from the road. But it's tough. I kill cactus, man. I, it's really, I am on the go so much. I am working all the time and traveling all the time. So it's really impossible to have a pet, but someday I do want to have a, chocolate and vanilla pug i would like to have a white pug and a black pug and it'll be like the uh benetton it'll be awesome rich who was your best influence growing up started with gene krupa went to carmine apathy and then it went into guys like greg bissonette and kenny aronoff and Stuart copeland and neil peart and then quickly to song drummers like jeff Picaro and um uh, jeff Picaro and john robinson and and then i went backwards and did my research and learned about how blaine and Steve Gadd, and um, some of these people are my friends now. So you reap what you sow. What do you think of triggers samples? Okay, hey, here's a, here's a uh, for any composer or songwriter or drummer out there that wants to enhance your drum sound. Um, I have a drum sample package at a website called Nashville Sampling Co. C-O dot com. Nashville Sampling Co. dot com. My buddy Garrett, who plays drums for Carrie Underwood, and my buddy Justin, they have a company and they have a sampling company. And basically, I set up in a world-class studio here in Nashville for two days, two or three days. They were 18-hour days, 44,000 samples. Every drum that I own was recorded and sampled. And they all have funny names. And you could buy the whole package for $149. It might be $99. And you will own all my drum sounds. You can load them into your SPDSX. You can trigger them from your drums, and you could literally take the Rich Redman drum sound with you anywhere in the world. How about that? Um, you are so busy. Do you work out to keep your endurance? And when I hang up with this live, I am going downstairs to do light weights, stretching, and an hour of cardio. And lately, I've been walking straight uphill on the treadmill fairly quickly for an hour, and I listen to the Mark Marin podcast, WTF. <laughs> so um, he's kind of like my... Um, Spirit Whisperer as far as um, interviewers right now. And, you know, the, the interview is interesting. It's the same interview every time. He talks about um, what they do, where they come from, and how they got to where they are. That's basically the life journey, right? So, you know, kind of same with us, what Jim and I are doing with Pick Rich's Brain. But, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're interviewing authors, thought leaders, actors, and musicians. So um, hopefully you get a little bit of a different slant every, every time. But, yeah, that's my thing right now, man. Check out the WTF podcast. It might be old news for you, but he's got 900 episodes, just like my buddy uh, Steve Cooper, coopertalk.net, 600 episodes. You rock, brother. I'm a singer-songwriter, but seriously, you inspire me as a person. Well, thanks so much, Joshua. Um, so generally in tune with your audience, bravo, man. Oh, well, dude, thank you so much. I owe a lot to songwriters because if a songwriter or a producer or a band or an artist doesn't hire me, I am basically playing by myself, which I usually try to save for Sunday morning. Um, Rich Jackson, pugs are the best. Nice. Joe Kunkel, excited to see you in Chi-Town. Love Chi-Town, man. You're a great model, role model. Thank you, man. Brenda, I've been following you since day one. Yes, you have, Brenda. Thank you so much. I'm, I really do appreciate everybody that has stuck around these last 10 years on Facebook, um, on all the platforms, but probably this has been the most consistent one. Seems like the, um, a great way to reach 5,000 people with a couple of keystrokes. Um, you can let people know what you're doing uh, very, very quickly, a large number of people, which I think is, you know, the key to just keeping your name out there. Uh, Rich, adopt a dog. Don't buy a designer dog. Um, 
All right. <laughs> I think that's going to be a long, long time. I would probably have to get married again and have a wife take care of the dog. Do you use a mic or line? No, I am just here, just sitting here talking into the air, and the mic is being picked up on my Macintosh computer. Uh, is there other sounds besides real drums, percussion sounds? Nope, I did not do percussion. That would be days and days and weeks of sampling. And there, I've had a lot of requests for people asking about grooves, drum set grooves in particular, songwriters that want me to play grooves. And I will tell you, if I did a groove package, I probably will do a groove package at some point. It would be totally user-friendly stuff because um, there's a lot of cinematic stuff out there and it sounds too smart. It sounds too cinematic. I know a lot of you, when you're writing songs, you want to hear boom, whack. Boom, boom, whack, boom, whack, boom, boom, whack. Different tempos, different feels that are reminiscent of something you would hear on the radio. And that's exactly what my loop package would be. And I would do it for drums and percussion. Um, Dan Tucker, Fort Scott, Kansas. Kansas? Yeah. Is that KS? Is that right? Yep. Um, I want those sounds. Where do I get those samples? NashvilleSamplingCo.com. Slow me, Pinto. Any chance of visiting Tel Aviv? That sounds fun. I've got some... I've got some friends from there. A matter of fact, um, one of the most popular recording drummers in Nashville right now, his name is, is Nir Z. N I R Z. And I know he's from Israel, and he played on the first John Mayer Room for Square Records. And he plays on all the Blake Shelton records and stuff. Great drummers. And he was a guest at my drummer's weekend. So who knows? I would love to explore some parts of the country, uh, the world that I have not been to. Can you sounds be used on vintage? Yeah. I got a question real quick. Yeah, man. I'm wondering if everybody here watching would love to see the songs that shaped you, like we had talked about. Oh, so so my buddy Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com, and my producer, he asked a question. He said, Rich, um, who wants to see this series on YouTube? The songs that shaped me. Basically, I don't do a lot of covers. I don't do any covers. But I would do a video series on all the songs that influenced me growing up. So it might be, um, might be a Beatles song. might be a, um, a Mellencamp song. It might be a um, Police song. And I would just cover, I would cover them note for note. And I would probably film them in Crash Studio from multiple angles. And that would be really, really fun. Jim, it's on the to-do list. I know for sure I do want to do it. Jake! Make you think back about this one. You probably have told the story before, but I've never heard it before. How did you get the gig with Barbara Mandrell? I did not get the gig with Barbara Mandrell. The first three times I came to Nashville were three weeks in a row. I auditioned for Trisha Yearwood, Barbara Mandrell, and Dina Carter. Three songbirds in early 1997, February of 1997. I auditioned for all of these wonderful recording artists. The impetus for me moving to Nashville, giving my band in Dallas, Texas, two weeks notice, was me not getting those jobs. The job went was between me and another drummer that already lived in Nashville. They loved my playing. The fact that I didn't live in Nashville was the nail in the coffin. That's why I did not get the gig. And that's why I moved to Nashville. That's why if you want to make a great change in your life, put it on the calendar. Hold yourself accountable because there's always going to be another reason for you not to make that shift not to make that change, all right? So put it on the calendar. Robert Smith, great to see you. Robert, uh, Robert I believe, it, I know a couple Robert Smiths, but you, I think, are the Robert Smith that picked me up um, from the airport in Lubbock, Texas, and you're a great bass player, and we did some events together and pay, played together back in the day, like in the 80s. Joshua, if you ever get a chance, look me up, Joshua Lee Nelson. Yeah, man, or hit me on um, you know Instagram. Anybody out there that's not following me on Instagram, this is what I really, this is my ask of you. I just try to give, 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 give to you guys. Follow me, please. I'm just at Rich Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D, on Instagram, and I'm posting high-quality content all the time, how to play the drums, how to play the drums better, how to live a better life, little nuggets, little memes about how you can improve your life and your music career. Jamie, you're a class act, Rich. Oh, your positive attitude is contagious. I will tell you that. Enthusiasm is contagious. Enthusiasm is contagious, and the one thing people will always remember about you is your attitude and how you treated them and the experience you had together. So it's something I always talk about in my events. I really appreciate you noticing that, Jamie. Jamie, we met years ago at my friend Mike Latanzi's studio out there in um, oh, Leaper's Fork. Seems like another, it's like, it's like another state. Um, it's out there, but my buddy... Uh, 
Yeah, my buddy Mike Latanzi um, has an amazing studio out there. He's got like two boards. He's got analog gear. He's got millions of dollars worth of outboard gear. Gets great drum sounds. Produced a lot of really great records. And we are overdue for getting together if Mike Latanzi is listening. Kim Wildman. Kim was my high school girlfriend. And we are friends on Facebook now. How about that? We went to the prom together. And I think that she went on to stay and create a life for herself in El Paso, Texas. So who knows? Maybe when I'm in El Paso, Texas, doing that drum clinic at the University of Texas, El Paso, or playing a gig somewhere in El Paso, we will go to Chico's Tacos and we will catch up. Bring your husband. Here we go. Great to jam with you at our rock and roll fantasy camp, snare tuning, looser super tight. Keith, what's up? Yeah, if, for you guys that don't know, I am somewhat regularly a counselor at the rock and roll fantasy camp. This year, it was in North Hollywood, and the guests were Ario Speedwagon, Foreigner, and Night Ranger. And so my job as a counselor was to work with a group of um, music hobbyists, and they would come in for the weekend over a 72-hour period, and, and they get to jam with those bands, Foreigner, Ario Spanberg, and Night Ranger. And we practiced, and we practiced, and we practiced, and um, got to play with those guys at the world-famous Whiskey A Go-Go, where everyone from The Doors to Zeppelin to Guns N' Roses has played on the Hollywood Sunset Strip. It was a really, really amazing time. Snare tuning. Usually medium to tight for live applications. And then a lot of times in the studio, you go a little bit lower. And um, if I'm doing something for an Americana artist or an R&B type artist, I will use a really spongy snare drum that's covered in duct tape and paper. And just experiment with getting different sounds out of your snare drum. Here's a great thing. Do buy one snare drum and see how many different sounds you can get out of that one snare drum. All right, Keith, keep in touch, man. Please, Richard Jackson, have you ever created or planned to create an expansion pack for Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer? Um, I, a lot of people have told me that I need to do a loop package for Superior Drummer. I was talking about my buddy Near Z. He was actually the original drummer on Superior Drummer that they recorded at Avatar Studios in New York. Amazing drum sounds. Um, if they approached me and they wanted to do a modern country rock drumming package, um, hopefully my name would come up. You know, I'm sure there's some other names that would come up. Your, your Lonnie Wilsons and your Chris McHughes and your Near Z's and your Nick Booth, some of those guys. Um, so who knows? You know, maybe uh, drop them an email and say, I want Rich to, to be the next guy that does an expansion pack, a modern rock, modern country rock drumming expansion pack for a um, superior drummer. Uh, what made you choose 16-inch hi-hats? They're deep, they're rich, they're chocolatey, they're bigger. They sound different. They make me sound more unique, and they take up less space in the mix. They get out of the guitar frequencies, and they have their own, their own frequency in the mix. Check them out. You'll try 16-inch hi-hats. You'll never go back. The smallest you will go will be 15-inch. Thank you for inspiring my son, Ben. Thank you, Tracy. Of course, my pleasure. Greg Simmons, I'll see you. We'll be moving on soon from Jason Aldean. I am, will not be moving on soon. I'm going to play that gig until we die. We're planning on taking that gig to Vegas and to a cruise ship near you. Hopefully not before 10 years from now, but we are very busy. A new record is coming out, and I am on every track of that. We're going to be doing tons of television shows, and we're going to be doing a tour that takes us to 36 cities this year. So we'll see you there. Look for those tour dates at jasonaldean.com. Joey, we need to do another crash course in Roanoke, Virginia. Bring John with you and maybe Sean Deal. Yeah, that was a really, really good time. Uh, my buddy Sean Deal, who's a drummer here in town, hosted me for a nice – uh, crash event in Roanoke, Virginia, and we did it in the um, one of the meeting rooms of like a Holiday Inn or something, and we were making everyone around us quite angry, but we had a really, really great, great time, and I brought Tyler Farr's drummer, and I brought Florida Georgia, Lions, or Florida Georgia Lions drummer with me, and so everybody in attendance got three viewpoints um, from three different types of players, so that was really, really fun. Same for Facebook, Tim Shelton. Hey, bus watching the watching from Oklahoma. The oil field takes most of my time, so the drums are fairly dusty. Thanks for the inspiration to want to practice. Yeah, man. Well, see, you got a nice solid job there that just keeps on giving and giving, and the drums are fun for you, and that's great. It's less stress for you. Um, you just play for fun. You know, my my thing is is I I have to sing for my supper, and I just and uh, it's fun, and I have to make sure that it stays fun, right? Keith Watson, loose rather. Okay, Sue, I just started weighing with the high. I started weighing with the high hat. I'm now learning songs. Any advice? You're, you, I guess you're probably um, 
using the hi-hat with the left foot maybe? Maybe Sue asked me that question again. Your clinic changed my life. Thanks, Randy. I really appreciate it. Are you still using AKG? Never have used AKG. I've been a 10-year endorser of Audio-Technica microphones. They're fantastic to me. All the microphones in my studio, a crash studio where I record for people around the world are Audio-Technica microphones. Ian, I was talking about the Porter and Davies seat. Do you use a, a mic or a line on the seat? Um, I think John splits it, so we might take the microphone from the inside of the kick drum, and then we also trigger a, a sound. When you trigger a sound from a unit, there's less latency. Uh, but for those out there, um, the Porter and Davies Throne is a, an amazing thumper. It's a butt thumper. It's this low-end vibrating unit that you put underneath your throne. It's actually built into the throne, and it has zero latency. And once you get addicted to it, you will miss it. Uh, so check that out. Do you still work with John Hull? Yeah, man. John Hull and I, I hired John almost six years ago. Got him hired out of college. Guys bought two houses, paid for a car. We worked together all the time. Um, John actually did all the digital editing on my Drumming in the World, Drumming in the Modern World, Drumming in the Modern World dot com educational package. He engineers every recording session I do at Crash Studio for artists from around the world. He helped me edit my Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids book, which is distributed by Hal Leonard and published by Modern Drummer. You can buy it at moderndrummer.com. And he works with me on the road. He works with me for sessions in town, and he rents out his drums to my speaking clients. So whenever I do a motivational speaking event, John rents out his drums to the client. So kid is super smart and he's super good at what he does. And now John is actually managing my clinic career. So if anybody knows John Hall and they have ideas for me doing a clinic event in your area, hit John Hall. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Follow Johnny Fletch Drums on Instagram because uh, John does a series called um, Tech Talk or something like that. And, it, and he gives some really great video advice in under 59 seconds on how to be a better tech, all right? And if you're doing your own teching, even better reason to watch. As much as I love Aldine, I pay for a ticket just to see you work. That's so sweet. I was at the House of Blues in Chicago years ago. Yeah, they were talking. We're talking maybe six or seven years ago. You filmed the Walmart special. Absolutely. Your crazy self broke four drum heads that night. I remember that. I remember that. I, I didn't have a super dedicated um, – may, I may have had my friend Ed Turner working me with me at that point. Ed Turner had worked with a band called Alabama for 20 years and he was my drum tech and he loved me and hated me because I broke so many snare strainers, snare heads. I was using a different drum company at the time and it wasn't quite as, um, it couldn't stand the wrath, my wrath, you know, but now with DW drums, nothing has ever broken ever. And I've been with them for, um, since 2010. So, um, uh, played in Tel Aviv in 1997. All right, Scott, man, I got to see it, man. I got to see it. We'd love to see that. I would see that too. Tori says, me, me, me. I don't know what that means. Can the sample pack be used with an electronic kit in real time? Go to nationalsamplingco.com and read all about the product. I wish I knew. The main platform it works with is, um, I should know this right now, is um, Contact. So read about whether it's going to be good for you, um, but the sounds are amazing. I'm getting a lot of feedback from composers that I've given the sampling package to, and they use my snare drums all the time on the project, snare drums and kick drums. Uh, Sarah, that would be awesome. <sighs> Anything with you is awesome, Sarah. CJ, I would love to watch it. Come back to Texas Tech, alumni band. Oh, yeah, something like that would be really fun. I've never gone to a high school, grad, uh, high school reunion. I've never gone to a college reunion. Hey, Rich, what, do you, uh, what all do you have in your in-years? Everything. I have a little bit of everything. I have the guitars panned. A lot of click, a lot of loop, Jason's vocal. If you don't have the vocal, you're in trouble because that's the person that's singing the song. That's the person that's cutting your check. You have to be able to help them and guide them and phrase for them, right? That's, that's the most important thing you could put in your mix is the singer. Rich, what's your TuneBot setting on your snare drum? I don't know. Mm, I don't remember. But I think if you go to TuneBot.com or Google TuneBot, go to the website and a couple of the names on there, um, the me and the Mark Shulmans of the world have our settings on there. So check that out. Um, Scott, I joined. All right, man. All right. Greg Simmons. 
Kim Wildman, that would be super cool to see you. Yeah, ex-girlfriend. I took a lesson on money beats, vending to you about my stressing feel and time, the importance of a click track, keeping rhythm section solid when we all have busy lives. So this song to you, which I tracked in November. Okay, I got a little dedication there. Thanks, brother. I got a YouTube link right there from Stephen Smith. Hey, if anybody wants to send their videos of them playing, of me playing, of you playing, I'll watch the video. I'll watch at least 30 seconds of it, and I'll give you feedback about how you can improve. Send it. Tag me on Instagram. You got to follow me on Instagram, at Rich Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D. Come on, guys. Rich would love to do one-on-one -on -one lessons. Easy. Um, guys, I know it sounds like I am doing an infomercial right now, and I am like Mike Rowe before my, he was Mike Rowe. Um, but I will tell you this. There's a new platform. And I want you to be an early adapter of it. Imagine being one of the first people to adopt Uber and Lyft, how smart you would feel. It's called Meet Hook. M-E-E-T, Hook. It's an app on the App Store. Download it right now. Guys like me, Kenny Aronoff, Sandy Gennaro, um, Troy Laqueta, big drummers. We are teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons, career consultations, music business advice, and life lessons via this app. It's called Meet Hook. Literally, I will be using it this week. I'm going to be doing a post later this evening. You look on the app and you see when I'm available and you sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me. I'm going to be using it a lot because I have downtime backstage. I have downtime at airports. I'll be able to click. There's a thing called Meet Hook Now. And if you are following me and you like me on Meat Hook, you'll get a notification that says, Rich Redmond is available now for 30 minutes. You sign up right then. Me and you are talking just like this on your smartphone. And I'm giving you advice about anything. A portion of the proceeds goes to my favorite charity. I think I selected Music Education, um, Harvest, Second Harvest Food Bank, or Breast Cancer. One of those. And a portion of the proceeds goes to those charities. Tracy, thanks for visiting. Um, it fails Academy. I don't think that's the way you pronounce it. I Thales. Th I know it's a funny pronunciation because it's a Greek word. But I had such a good time, Tracy. My buddy Anthony Grady is a big believer in me, just like Jim McCarthy is, and just like Paul Deepan is, and just all of our my friends that have been with me for a long, long time. He had me come speak to the uh, kids there so at a private school. They were so well-behaved and so mannerly and so well-dressed. I had, I had hardly anything to say to the kids. They were so well-mannered. Well hey, Rich, thanks for the message the other day. Hope to see you soon, minus the financial situation. What do you suggest for being a comfortable behind the drum set? Practice, practice, practice. Working the hi-hat and learning new songs. Any advice? Working the hi-hat. I'm assuming with your left foot. Because I'm assuming if you're learning new songs, that's the first thing you learn is right? But using the left foot is something that a lot of people ignore. So work on the left foot. I actually wrote an article for Modern Drummer Magazine called The Forgotten Foot. And then if you type in The Forgotten Foot, Rich Redman on YouTube, there's a lesson on The Forgotten Foot. Uh, Tim, Timmy Stokes, lesson learned, among others, from a clinic. Don't double dip veggies. I don't remember that. That is so funny. Somebody probably had so like a uh, catering thing for me backstage, and I double dipped, or somebody double dipped. But thanks for reminding me, Timmy, and thanks for keeping in touch, Kelly. Uh, whose in-ear molds do you use? I use Ultimate Ears, the um, ones with all the low-end drivers for drummers. I've been with Ultimate Ears a long, long time. I also have to say that my friend um, uh, Mitch in Florida has a company called Dream Ears Monitors. Check out Dream Ears. And I think the ears is with a Z. He does really great work. And um, his in-ears are very affordable. Very affordable. So you want to check that out. Um, Dream Ears. Uh, Bob Stagner, what's up, buddy? Larry Miller, hello from Cincinnati. What's your favorite snare wires? I use the DW standard ones, or I'll go to a drum shop and I'll get those cannons, the 40-strand cannons. All my snare drums have 40 strands because I want the snare drum to go. <laughs> I want it to have the sizzle and that thing that makes it a snare drum. It's not a tom-tom, it's a snare drum. So why not really extend the... The, the, the length of the snare buzz. So I use a 40 strand on everything, maybe not on a piccolo. Hey, man, are you open to critiquing recording performances? Absolutely. Um, I, I hope it just doesn't get crazy because I don't know if I have that kind of time, but 
Um, I remember sending recordings to some of my hero drummers growing up and they never got back to me. And I always promised myself that I would listen and watch performances or recordings of anything that anybody sent me. And so I will do it. Send it to me. Email it to me, booking at richredmond.com. If we're friends on Facebook, send me a direct message. Hit me at my website, richredmond.com. I will watch it. Of course, I'll critique performances. I'll watch it. Try to make it to the chorus. If you suck, I will probably not get to the chorus. Um, here we go. Reposting this. Your buddy, Alex, what's up? Hey, Rich, good to see you. Um, hope all is well. Sorry, I got the sniffles. If you were to sell a drum set, would you sell it with the hardware or keep the hardware? If the if the person wants the whole kit and caboodle, sell the whole kit, kit and caboodle. It depends. Like some people just want the drums. Uh, what's the best program to use for editing your videos? Jim is my producer and he edits all my videos. If I can't do it on iMovie or if I can't do it in an Instagram trim or on a Twitter trim, I ain't doing it. I surround myself with greatness. And so my people that do my video editing are a guy named Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com and my buddy, John Hull. Follow him, Johnny Fletch Drums on Instagram. Nico, yes, you can. The Rich Redmond sample pack with an E drum kit and really an E pad. Literally the best samples I've played with the dynamic search. Nico, you bought my package and you loaded them into a sample pad. I created the samples and I don't even have a copy of them to load into my sample pad. Man, so when I see you in Indiana, you'll have to show me and maybe for the clinic, I can use your SPDSX and I could trigger my own samples. How about that? Okay, so for those people that have been asking, you can buy the Rich Redmond uh, Modern Country Rock Sample Library at Nashville Sampling Co. Co. Com. You can download it. It's ninety nine bucks, hundred fifty bucks. You got it forever. How many ex girlfriends do you have? No one has your old cat. You are the what? No one has your old cat. Um, Tim Strokes. I don't know. Hey, Jim McCarthy, are you FaceTiming with me? Hey, Jim, are you FaceTiming with me? I am. Oh, Jim McCarthy's here, guys, because um, there he is right there. There's Jim. Um, yes. It's really tough. Did, did your wife cook dinner for you? There she is. She did. She did. Oh, Spencer's behind. Wants to. I will tell you what. If there is a woman out there that cooks, I will stay, you, stay with you for longer than I should <laughs> because I'm half Italian and there's something sexy about a woman cooking a man a meal. I hope I do not lose fans by saying that, but I know there's some guys out there that agree with me. <laughs> Can't wait to see you all at Hootie and the Blowfish in Atlanta. Is that public knowledge? Fantastic. How did that come about? I don't know. Relationships, cocktails, it happened one night. Um, you know, we know Hootie. We know Hootie. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Gary. Uh, we know Darius. Darius. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. Um, Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com. Look at that. He, Jim, you use Vegas Pro, Sound Fortress, and any software in a Canon 80D. You know what? Anybody that wants to do anything in life now, the tools are there, and they're more affordable than ever. So really, there is no excuse for you not doing a podcast, not going live, not taking lessons, not practicing. What's up, guys? How you doing? Did you do your homework? Did you do your homework? Um, I don't have any. Don't have any don't have any homework. I sound like an old man. What's up with the kids these days? It's spring break. Oh, oh it's spring break. Okay, that's why there's no homework. Okay. Um, guys, this has been really incredible. Uh, really incredible. Greg Simmons, why do Weekend Warriors drummers constantly fill during solos? I just don't understand. When they, wa when they watch concerts of you, of like you, don't they get it? Give them advice. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, great question, great question, brother. But, you know, Learning how to craft a drum part for a song is something that takes years and years and years. And it's one thing that Nashville taught me. It taught me how to play for the song. And if you can play for the song, you will always work. You will always work because we don't get paid for drum solos. Drum solos are a bonus. If you can do drum solos, that's great. But we get paid to play time, make things feel amazing, lift up the band, make everybody else play smoothly, you know, bring out the best in them. Really, the drummer is the conductor, right? Okay, this has been really, really, really fun. I'm going to be doing this a lot more. And what did we learn? Well, I talked about a lot of things. I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram, Rich Redmond. Tell a friend, please. It's my goal to put quality content on there that can help you. It's not about me. It's about you. How can my experience in life, 41 years playing the drums, 21 years in Nashville, help you be better at what you do? Um, writing a book right now, really happy about that. Um, and 
check out lessonsquad.com, make money on your on your craft, have your day job, be playing music, and download the Meat Hook app. M E E T Meat Hook and you'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, lessons and coaching with me right there on your phone. And um, we have uh, great stuff coming up in the future with Pick Rich's Brain. We're thinking about maybe changing the name. Let me know. We we're thinking of maybe changing it to um, MMF, which sounds a lot like M or F, -er, but it's really music, motivation, and friends, right? Because on Pick Rich's Brain, we really talk about all things music, motivation, and success. Does that have a ring to it? MMF with Rich Redmond. MMF with Rich Redmond. I'm going to have to reproduce the entire intro. And Jim might have to do redo an intro, but here, you're picking my brain right now. But when I interview people, there's less of a pick of a brain picking going on and more of a just straight interviewing. And for those of you guys that have been watching the, the web series, Pick Rich's Brain, on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Rich Redmond, thank you. Because if you haven't noticed, I'm reinventing myself and I'm working on my skills as a television host. As, and as an interviewer, and as a podcaster, and as a voiceover artist. And these are things I'm very interested in. And if anybody saw me, one year and two days, from two days ago, I co-hosted Today in Nashville with uh, Kelly Sutton. And it was a great success, and we had an amazing time. And I might be doing it again in July. Um, so thank you for the support and for believing that I, too, can be maybe the next Mario Lopez. Who knows? I might need to wipe my teeth. But anyways, thank you guys. Keep in touch with me. Follow me on Instagram. Um, share the podcast. Rate the podcast. Like the podcast. And uh, check out Jim McCarthy, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com. If you're a business owner and you need a strong voiceover guy, Jim's your guy. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have an amazing night. I'm going to work out. See you soon. <laughs>